Hello, Wide Job Deer here, and today's little adventure happens to deal with this little guy here, the spigot, the hose spigot, or um, valve, garden valve, we're going to call it. And um, I had a report here of something gone wrong with this, so let's just take a look at it here. Give it a turn on here. Right now, I can see there's some water being up here, and it's a it's a little weird feeling. It's not it's not smooth. A smooth turn on. So step one on these things here is to turn the water off to the house now or to the spigot. If your spigot's not hooked up to the whole house water works then uh, you can turn on separately or turn off. But down here we've got a valve. That valve there probably does turn the water off to it but I don't trust it. I like the valve out at the street. So I'm gonna go find that valve and give it a twist and turn it off, and I'll come back and fully open this thing here and let, let it drain. Alright, so water's turned off now. At the street, I'll just uh, open this up full. Pretty full there to get the rest of the water up. And then I'll take me an uh, adjustable wrench here and uh, get sized right and go on this top um, nut here. Alright, seems kind of loose. That's the uh, first sign of why it might have been leaking at the top. So I'll just back it out here. When we get that nut off, then unscrew this part here. There, see, it looks like that. Now, if you look in here, you can see... Can you see that? Of course not, I'm too close. Um, right away, I see a culprit of why it had a little weird feeling to it. And that is, this part here, the surface, is just flat metal with a broken off uh, screw head. That's no good. So that means there should be a screw on this thing here and a washer that goes on top of this. Now, this top part, um, let me see if i got a tool here. Nice Phillips in here, this looks like a stainless steel screw maybe. A little muscle. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe a little bit more muscle. But, um. Okay, well, I'm gonna go find something stronger than, than my hand. And, uh, you can see right here that this, this, uh, little washer or something here. There should be some extra packing up in there, too. Um, speaking of extra packing. What else is in the little rabbit hole down here? Let's take a little blurry look here. And I can see something down there. And, uh... Oh, I need some meal on those. So, I need some meal on those. I think some tools going here. Alright, retrieve some meal on those. And uh, let's see what's uh, that shows down up in here, huh? Yeah. Look at that, it's a washer. Right? <laughs> um, mm hmm. Seems pretty good. Now, let me see what else is in here first. Because there should be a nut hit in there somewhere. Okay, well, can't find the nut head. I found this washer. You know what? The washer by itself is in that bad a shape. Um, so normally, you'd have it like this part here. Flat part of the washer goes up in there. Have a screw going in there. And well, now it's all messed up. So, now we're at the option, the hard decision here. Do we replace little valve down here 
which I might point out this one does not have it but some of them are tricky some of them have at the end of them uh, threads look like outer side threads along here and that one there doesn't and I let me give you a clue that one there also doesn't have inside threads either I'm pretty sure that's uh, sweat soldered on and uh, true story once upon a time there's a guy that saw threads you know down uh, down right in there at the end of the thing and couldn't see the pipe where it goes on the wall and thought okay this is just you know screwed on so I clamped down on it and got a good grip on it and wrenched it and wrenched it and wrenched it and then before you know it twisted off and yeah it was sweat soldered on and it was a horrible job after that this one here is also a horrible job because not only we have to deal with this screw head here broken off this back one now someone just stripped it off as in me because uh calcium whatever maybe it's the, the grid of the screw here it's just uh could be stainless steel but uh it's somehow um just so tight in there that i pressed in there and it just uh did not spin out so we're at either fixing this or taking that off and get a new one on which I would probably vouch for that part there if I was a better sweat solderer. So instead, I'm going to try to fix this thing. But I'm going to take this back to my lab. And meanwhile, this thing here, I'm going to turn the water back on so I can blow anything out of it, like uh, screw parts or whatever. All right. I'm not going to show that though. Okay, so guess what? After running around the whole town, and going to the big box stores, which sometimes never seem to have anything I'm looking for when I'm working on something. Um, I did not have much luck. So the idea was, was to find a valve, probably something from the 70s, whenever this place was built. And, um, you know, basically get a new one that matched this. Right? And I found one that actually matched, I think, the top. But these threads here, very important threads, did not match. And then they also need to be machined it. And it's probably the same company that made that one, just you know, they, they switch stuff up. A lot of stuff doesn't even have that size of a uh, spigot valve anymore because, um, you know, everyone's getting cheaper. So they know if they can make a little bit less metal there, they save more on the brass, and that in turn makes a bit of a bit profit later on. So, what we're stuck with now is this options. Now, I have seen that um, for the top the part that le leaks, there's this little metal washer in here on this particular one. Yours might be different. And up in there, there is some other kind of, um, probably rubber packing or something up in here that you can't quite get to. I got a fix for that that should work pretty good. Now this one here, oh, and that's without taking this off. You just leave that on, forget about it. If you can take it off, I was going to show how this pair comes off, and you can actually buy a new washer sometimes that packs up in here, especially made, but um, there's a trick for this. This part here now is a little bit of a problem. So I got this part here, this little stud sticking out. <clears throat> Maybe if I'm lucky, which I'm not, I can grab on it with pliers and back it back out. Or you have to tap and drill it. Um, drill and tap it. So if you're looking to have a, I think a left fluted drill set, which actually spins backwards, try to drill this thing out with that. And that might actually get to where you can back out these threads and save you some time tapping. But if you have to drill it, you drill down, you get that out of there, and then you get a nice clean surface, and then you tap it at a, uh, a, a screw, bolt, whatever, slightly bigger than this one here was. Okay? Now, that I'm going to save for another show. What we're going to do today, and it's quick and easy, is, uh, one, no matter which way you go, to fill this thing here, you want to go to the hardware store and um, look for a uh, washer, right? There's special washers, a little bit thicker than normal washers, and look for one that fits the size like this. Okay? And um, that sticks on there. It's not going to fall off, but it will fall off if you put it in there. So, today's special tip here, and it's not the best option, but it is for right now because you want to get this thing done and get the water turned back on the house, is check for other spigots that are original to this house, like I think that one might be. And then, um, are not being used so often and then take that apart and use it and I think I found one okay and here it is 
our uh, test subject. So let me get the uh, wrench out here and uh, see if I can get that top off without messing anything else up. Back this part off and same size here. Oh, nice, just a little turn. kind of shape this one here is in. Now I can see right now the packing is excellent on the top it feels like. The threading might be a little bit different. It has a washer in there that needs to be replaced probably. But um, we'll take a look here. See if the one fits in there good. Remember, very careful not to cross thread this stuff. Alright, so we got the old one here, pack it in there, and oh, let me show you something here. So this part here, I've got a small disc down here, what we'll do is we'll bring it down and then we'll get our friend um, Teflon tape involved. Alright, Teflon tape. And uh, you can buy Teflon packing in the store. So you want a pretty good bunch of this. Teflon packing is about, I think, an eighth of an inch thick. Pack this up like so. And uh, yeah, fold it. I'm going to fold it over twice. And we just kind of roll it up into a uh, rope, per se. And then lift this part here, the bonnet up, and have the washer there, and just uh, wrap it on in there. How do you get past that calcium stuff? Mm-hmm. Get star there. And packing we will go. Get in there, yeah. Try not to get caught in the washer too much. Okay. There, got that part situated. More or less. Get in there. Okay. Now We'll throw this beast back on here and see if it threads good. Remember, no cross threading. Make sure your uh, washer's on here. And here it goes. So that's not going to work because even this tip part doesn't go in. So, and yes, the valve is a little bit, for the keen people, the valve is a little sh different shape. So we'll look for another valve and I'll get the uh, pliers to get that thing out there and put the old spigot back in. All right, so we're here. The tap and we will go. Um, got me some spectacles, safety glasses, right? I'll don them. You definitely want to have your eye protection on for this. And, uh, this here I'm, I'm gauging is about a eighth of an inch or so. The, the shaft of that um, old boat, so uh, old uh, bolt in there. So I got, I got my golden drill bit set here, right? The finest I got. And this happened to um, go pretty small. They go down to a sixteenth and a fifty-five sixty-fourth. I'm going to go ahead and start with a five sixty-fourth. Little bitty guy here. These are not left fluted. They're your normal right fluid, and um, I found a drill 
somewhere. Huh. You know, I might do a little old school here, right? None of that plug and stuff, and so I'm gonna you know let you back the chuck up here. Granted, this is the worst case scenario, I think. You know, if you, if you have a drill press like I do, just not hooked up, you um wanna fix this up in a drill press. But you don't need like, you know, rocket um limits on this thing. Rocket clearances. Yeah. Alright, plug this puppy in and see if we got any uh, power to it would be nice. Okay. It's a variable speed too. Kind of. Now, I'm aiming for dead center. I already tried using a um a thing. A nice pair of pliers that just kinda crushed it down more so it's almost flat right here. Um right where I'll be drilling at. And you can use some uh, patience on, on this, but um, try to line up your drill bit right in the middle of that. And uh, start out slow. And adjust as you go down. Don't get too high speed, and then you can back it up and uh, get rid of your uh, chips there. Mm. Got a uh, I'll brush here. Right, and then see how you're doing. Looking good. It looks like I'm right in the middle there of it. Don't know if it shows on the camera. No, nah, it doesn't. It's kind of blurry, but I'm. Um, I'm right in the middle of it now, so I'm just going to continue to uh, drill this out straight down. And you don't want to want to make sure your uh, vise has a good grip on it, but you don't want to ogre grip it in this case because I still have the uh, handle on the other side. And let me try this vice can crush that handle like nothing. Okay, I see um looks like steel coming off of it. Okay, it's part of the rusting. And now I'm hitting a little bit of brass. So take a closer look at it here. And see um, what's going on. Hmm. Looks like it might be a tad off towards the threads. That's okay. I'm now going to get some kind of a um, tool, a pick, a screw, or something. See if I can kind of pick this thing out some. Secure my drill so it doesn't fall down and break. And uh, let's see what I can get here. Ah, here we go. Some nice needle nose pliers. Because let me tell you, this metal is just rusted like no one's business. It's um not really ready to come out yet, I don't think. It's much being tight. But maybe it's ready for the next size up. Hmm. Ah, tighten you. So, next size up, I'll do. Man, your else is working today in the garages too, I guess. Is uh, let me check it. Okay, so um, I'm up to the eighth now. I did a one other um, drill step in between the eighth and this one. The one I started with, and then the eighth of them on now. Okay, let's see here. And I can tell I'm off a little bit center, of course. Oops. I can tell you to tighten up my bit, too. 
when it strips out like that. So we get that tightened, and uh, I'm going to try to bring this home here in a little bit and see what happens. Basically, take care of the uh, top part, get it flat, and then uh, drill straight down here. I'm just going to go a little bit deeper here, and uh, we'll right, see right so there. there's my hole. I, I, I took it off the thing, brushed it out some. Not too bad, huh? A little bit, uh, a little bit off, but not so good either. Now this next time is to uh, find the tap. Yeah. Okay, so a tap. Tap and die sets usually come in a, you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of them. Big sets, or you can just buy one or two. Because of the hole, the way it is, um, I'm going to go with an 832nd tap. It looks something like this right here. Right, it has some, some threads here that are sharp for cutting. Usually a squared off part. And you have the tap wrench like this. So you just back this part off and make sure it's the right size. But this goes in there. And uh, seems like it's already the wrong size. So let me go back to my set and find the right one. And um, go from there here. Let's see. Okay. This should do it. A little bit different one, hand one. The other one actually had a hole in the back. If you want to have like a, a lathe or something, or a milling machine, or a drill press, you can uh, get what's called either live or dead center and put it in there and it's all center, anyways. That's too much machining for right now. So, this one here we got. And um, this is going to fit. Right in like so, and then you just tighten the handle down until it's wedged in there nicely. Probably can't see much from that angle, but there we go. Urgh. Tight, right? Now then, brass is pretty soft, pretty forgiving, but I'm going to go ahead and put a little drop of oil in there. Hopefully, uh, just in case. Whoops. All right. Well loop now. And same thing. You want you need room here. Move some of the stuff here out of the way. Because the thing has to come down and swing pretty good. I don't want things messing up my drive. All right. So tight the vice clamp and straight down with this here should give us results that we want. It starts out pretty nice usually and gets a little bit harder as it turns but it's not so bad here. I'm just gonna go ahead and basically screw this in until you um, hit pretty close to the bottom I think should cut the threads out. Keep in mind how deep it is. Mm. Right, I think that's about it. So, I'll back it out. Nice and smooth. And... That should... be it. I mean, uh, yes, you want to clean it out, get the chips out of there like that. And in my case, we're off to the store to find a, uh, whatever screw this is, a 30 second, 8, 30 seconds I think it said it was, to fit that new hole. And I probably need 8, 30 second by, um, see it's about here, so I'll measure, but it's about, about, about an inch. So, inch and an eighth, no an inch, inch will be fine. You don't want to, when you put the new washer on, you don't want to jam it in there, so. Off the harbor strike go. Find a brass screw. Bolt. Alright, guess what? Ta-da! Little brass uh, 8 by 30 second bolt, I call them, because there's no point to it. And uh, this is a thing. So I found this in my workshop here. 
And some people are like, oh, job doer. Well, I got so much cur uh, stuff. And I'm like, well, in case like this, right? Save me a trip to the store, and I can finish this job up and uh, get going. So, hole tapped washer that fits in there. Snap on over there. And maybe I can turn it the other ways. So this one actually has writing on this side. So smooth on the back. The um, part where this goes into is a uh, kind of ribbed or something. It, it 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 makes its own notches. So screw goes back in there. Um, make sure you don't cross thread. Which uh, if you ever if you ever tap something nicely to put a new new bolt in, you'll you'll notice how smooth it goes in with the right screw and whatnot. So I'm going to tighten this down. Not ogre strength. I'm going to get down to um, where it's just kind of giving resistance. Maybe I'll do a quarter more. That should be good actually. Alright, now then. Back to the valve. Spigot. Alright, let's put this together now. So, like I said, we already got pack still up in here. In this top part. And so I'm just going to check that out, make sure it's good and still. And then, uh, make sure that washer's free to go up it. Alright, so got the washer moved down to the top. This thing here, the bonnet, and then uh, this right here goes into the uh, top here like it came out of. Alright, nice and fit. Don't cross the threads. I'll screw that down first. And you know what, if you want to test it out, you can just screw it down and turn it on. But, I'm not going to screw it down a little bit. I'm going to put this other part on here. Put that down there. And that's going to get a little wrench tight to it. Yeah, maybe once, twice. And this here's going to get seated down the rest of the way. Now then, I'm going to turn the water back on and we'll check it out here. See okay, what we got. So I got the water back on here and uh, uh, let's see what happens here, right? No leaks, that's a good sign. Yeah, pretty nice, huh? So, hook this thing back up for him. Blow out, Make sure nothing on there. I don't know if this is set up, but... It's ever so slightly a leak from this bonnet here. There. Alright. That's that, eh? Look at me turn off, but um, that is okay. Much better than what it was doing. All right, so there we go. How to do the hard way to fix a spigot when it's leaking? Maybe it would have been easier just to unweld it and put it on, but I don't do that, so this is easier for me. Now, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below. And uh, thanks for watching. Time for lunch.